Okay, yeah. So I thought about this a bit more. Um, and I do actually think that I want to have a root node. So let's let me actually like write out what something like that should look like in in valid JSON. Like what do what do I want to end up with? I want to end up with something that looks kind of like this. So I do want an index that'll be an object, and I do want a bunch of uh, nodes. And inside my index, I want a reference to the same nodes by their name. So if I had like a my node, or well, let's let's actually line it up with the thing that I'm building. Um, and inside here, we should just have another node. Uh, split that up so it's a bit cleaner, more obvious what's going on. So a uh, couple of things you'll notice here. Um, I guess index and nodes are the only stuff that's actually required. Well, I can even actually be kind of um, what I'm what I'm thinking. I thought about this more, and like what I'm thinking is I don't want to be. I want to leave things open for myself for expansion in the future. Um, so I'm not being super strict about syntax here. Like, pretty much every key on a node should be optional. Um, and the possible exceptions for that is index and nodes, where index is a link, uh, is a set of every node that's linked to you. And, um, well, or nodes is, is a list of every node that's linked to you, and index is just a way of getting it. Uh, here's the secondary thing that I was thinking, which I am 100% not sure about, but um, is potentially worth looking into. The problem with this is that it's not, maybe not deterministic, and it exposes some implementation details, and I'm a little bit weirded out by that. But, like, it would be nice to just have an index and to have everything be indexed, period. And and if you don't provide an ID, I just generate you a default one. Because you can, like this is JavaScript, you can iterate over an object's keys. That's not a problem. So the only problem, the only actual problem there is I would need to generate the keys in a deterministic way and I would need to check for collisions whenever you specify a key name. And I would never be able to go back and change that without, like, incrementing a major version. Um, it's a lot cleaner and better to stick them in an array. Um, but I don't want to extend an array and stick extra properties on an array. So for right now, just for clarity's sake, uh, just, just to ease development, and I will probably come back and figure something else, for right now, you get index and you get nodes. And in fact, let's even just make things, uh, nodes is fine for me. Um, the other thing I could do is move index off of the JSON structure entirely, but like I think that's kind of a waste. I think that's problematic because I want to be able, like, I want this to be just raw JSON. I don't want this to be an object that you're working with. I want you to be able to like send it over a REST request or do some kind of interesting things with it. Uh, so right now I'm going to treat everything quite literally everything is optional um no i just lied i just lied i'm gonna do it like this i am going to do it like this so for our sample data 
we are going to have one node up here. That is going to have a, oh my goodness, how did I just do this? <laughs> All right, nodes list index, yeah. That's that's a much cleaner syntax. So this is going to have a nodes list index. And I'm just going to auto stick this on every node because I'm the only one who's generating these nodes and I don't need my life to be easy, but I don't you don't need to do null checks when you're looking for properties. Um, so for stuff like ID, text, stuff like that, yeah, you're going to have to do some null checks. I'm not going to auto-propagate those because I want people to be able to arbitrarily add keys to things. So, But for the base structure, the absolute base structure, this is in fact all that I care about. And in fact, I'm not even going to care about text right now. So we're going to say that the actual graph is going to look like this. Yep. And let's just encapsulate this a bit. And that is ultimately... I don't think this will be tough to, to do at all. Um, but that is ultimately the starting point. Um, I think, honestly, I've probably already hit this in the demo. Or not the demo, but the, the proof of concept. Um, yeah. This is, if, if I can get this to be spit out, then that's success. So let's just assert that deep equal JSON graph and cool. So, uh, if I run NPM test, this should fail. Yep. It blows up very, very quickly. All right. Can't find module door mouse. All right, cool. So let's actually code the thing. Um, and before I do that, let's take a look at the original, th uh, the original sort of proof of concept that I was playing around with. Um, I think this is under explicate. So this was using acorn which works really well i'm going to be using acorn um all right cool what is this using i have lodash required in here why do i have lodash required in here uh lodash shouldn't be necessary for this um maybe i just stuck it in as a convenience thing because i knew i wasn't going to go anywhere with this whoa this is not what i want So this is where things get cleaner. So my original, my original sort of playing around with this was um, I tried to manually parse out <laughs> comments myself. Um, that fell apart very quickly because, actually, no, it worked. But but um, JavaScript has this thing now called template literals, and template literals can have JavaScript embedded inside of them, which means you're no longer worried about just escaping strings or anything like that you have to basically parse the AST um, in order to get the comments wherever they are because I do want comments to be able to be extracted from template literals. Um, so now I'm using Acorn because uh, Acorn is just a lot better at that. Um, it already generates an AST, so like there's no point in me reinventing the wheel. Where is this? Okay. So what Acorn does is, what on earth?
It's one of these files, I swear. <laughs> Yeah, all right. So what Acorn does is you just pass it in a block of code. It parses it out. It gives you an AST. Um, even better, you can go to Acorn and you can be like, hey, on comment, stick all of the comments in an array. And they will be labeled with comment type equals block. Um, it's super handy. It takes about half of the challenge of this and just makes it a completely trivial problem. So uh, we are going to need to install Acorn. Um, and other than Acorn, is there anything we're going to need? I kind of don't think so. So this is such, like, to start with, this is such a trivial problem. Okay. Uh, how does acorn work again? We just do acorn.parse. Um, we can pull the AST out, but I don't particularly care about that. Uh, so what's the actual... What's the actual stuff I want here? Dormouse will take a source and it will just spit out JSON. Um, and for now, that's all I'm going to worry about. Maybe there needs to be a more advanced API. I don't know. Whole point is just get things working and then refine it later. I don't actually need to do the whole function thing. You can stick things inside block statements, but I like to be able to return things. Uh, yeah. In fact, since we're doing this, let's get some practice with this and see if it's actually a good idea or not. So let's actually stick a couple of blank comments in here and see if I actually like the syntax and like using it. Uh, so we are going to call this at entry. We are going to label it dormouse. Um, I'm going to say um, call this method um, parses a source and returns a JSON object that represents your comments. Um, and we can get all fancy. We can be like, okay, I don't just want my API documented. In fact, I probably don't want to document my API in here. I probably want to move that to tests. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, but I also want to uh, document like an implementation implementation yeah so I can be like okay um, take comments and use acorn to parse comments Should work. All right, cool. Um, I am okay with that. I don't need an ID there. So what I can do, actually, when I try to do anything with this documentation, I'll try to to parse it out into a, a site or something like that, maybe at some point, um, is I can just skip over all the implementation details. Um, yeah, I actually quite like that. Uh, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, 
blarg, blarg. Parse source. Uh, what else was I doing? Wasn't there something else I was doing here? Oh yeah, ranges. I don't remember what ranges is used for. I'll Google it at some point or search it. Oh, I think it just tells it to include ranges, which is something that I am going to eventually want. have the yeah looks like that's correct all right cool so now I've got my comments extracted out um, and I first of all want to check what's going on with them so to distinguish between a comment that I don't want to parse, which looks like this, and a comment that does look like this, I basically want to uh, filter out my comments to only parse as long as I'm in here actually. Let's maximize that quickly. Um, here's, here's what actually caused me to want, when I was talking about, when I was talking about that idea of like putting text after something and having it be auto extracted out into a new node, Here's what actually caused me to want that is I want to be able to do it's not about at param like I don't care about at param at all I'm never going to use that in my documentation but what I do want to do is I want to be able to say at to do add other uh, block types other than star like I do want to be able to type this into my documentation and I want to be able to if I'm building a personal site or something I want this to be extracted out as a completely separate node that's a, a to-do node um, which means what that looks like has to be that it's linked that this block of text is linked to another block of text that itself is linked to a to-do node um, otherwise it doesn't work uh, and then the question about should that also be the case if I do my thing stuff 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 this is just a question of consistency like I don't really see a use for this other than it's weird that you can do it with ats and you can't do it with the index but maybe maybe this is just a shorthand for doing everything in one line maybe what you want to be able to do is to say my thing do a thing and maybe you even simplify that down to look like that actually no you wouldn't would you you would you would leave it double and then I would just say the first line any text that precedes it gets gets treated as a new line That's something that I could see, where I could say, my thing, do some stuff here. Would I be okay? Like, if I stuck in an at to do, make this better. That actually would be really handy to have. This is something that I would make extensive use of, to be able to just stick an at to do anywhere I wanted in my code. 
this would be extremely useful to make a blank node that's linked to at to do. This would be less useful, but I could see myself using this. Where this would not this would not work the same way as the at. This would um this would create another node with an ID of my thing and with a text of do some stuff here. Whereas this would make a new node linked to at to do and with the text make this better. I actually do want that, I th think. We'll come back to that. That can be a later thing. Um, and in fact, since we can just arbitrarily set these things, I'm going to have far more implementation details than I'm going to have public facing API. Um, that will almost always be the case with, uh, <laughs> that will almost always be the case with, with documentation. So we'll still leave this at entry, but we're going to switch things around and we're going to call this public. And anything that's not marked with public, if I eventually generate documentation out of this thing, I'm not going to show public nodes. Um, remind, uh, re remember that that's not part of the API. This is just me thinking ahead to like if I turn this code into documentation. Um... So when I have the same thing, we can do comments dot filter So at some point, this is going to need to be revised because I fully intend to have I fully, fully intend to to have other types other than just star. Um, but that looks real nice to me, actually. Um, so now we are filtering down to only comments that are of type star. We'll need to come back. Um, probably, probably that means that, um, you want a line number as well. So things that I'll want will be not just an ID and text and stuff like that. I'll want some sort of link back to the original source. Um, because like I'm thinking like if I could pull all of this stuff out into a text file and I could have like all of it extracted into an org mode file and then just hit one and it takes me back to the line number, that would be super handy. That would be so handy actually. Even like I'm saying this right now, and thinking how much I would use something like that. Crud. Okay, yeah. So at some point, yeah, I'll have to add links back to the source file and uh, um, allow you to specify stuff. Allow you to specify or append that, that stuff back onto the nodes. Because I... I actually really kind of want that. <laughs> All right. Um, um, and these will be tied together, I'm thinking, with like a preceding following block that like if you pass in a bunch of things, you should also be able to just parse through and see like give me all the comments in order. 
Uh, so what do we want to do? Speaking of that, let's actually build up our graph. Um, and you might be wondering why I am sticking everything in functions. That's just for grouping. You don't have to use functions for this, but I like to be able to call things and I like to be able to pass things into the function and create really nice closures. Um, so I do use functions, I don't use block statements. Um, and arguably, you don't even need that kind of, but like, I don't want this to be a public variable. Like these are encapsulated, they should stay encapsulated. Whatever, it might look ugly to you. Um, I've terribly terribly sorry if it does All right, so we've got our, what the heck, Emacs? Sometimes this thing. Every once in a while. That's gonna be maybe next year. Trying to get better auto-completion for <laughs> Emacs and JavaScript is just a waste of time. Um, so that's going to be my root node, and I want to be able to very quickly create those. Is it worthwhile to, like, make a function that does it? Probably. Probably. So I'm going to give you a root node per call. Um, this is not going to worry about, I'm not going to worry about right now finding the files even. Um, and what that actually means is, oh, that solves my problem about getting a reference to the file as well. Oh, this will be great, actually. Um, what that means is that you will have a separate root for each file that you parse. Um, and maybe I put together some sort of helper utility to, to help you grab all of your files and parse documentation. Because that might be annoying, and I can see myself not wanting to set that up every single project that I build. Although, honestly, it's not going to be that hard to set up. And sometimes my my source code is coming from novel places. Sometimes I'm requiring it as a node module. Sometimes maybe you want to make a REST request and get your source and parse your source that way. Um, so these should definitely be helper utilities. They should not be like, it should not be a core part of the, the library that you give it a file path. And um, the core part of the library should be you give it the source and maybe there's like a helper that's like grab source for each file or something. Um,
And that's basically it, right? We've got to propagate stuff in here. I could stick text if, if people really care about it, although I haven't, like, parsed that out, so we, we would need to do an at to do parse text at to do fill in uh, extract ID and probably you're allowed to have multiple IDs like I don't see why you wouldn't be able to say I don't see why you wouldn't be able to have arbitrary secondary indexing in fact, like this probably wouldn't even be at entry. I would probably just call this at entry. So I've already got a dormouse thing. And then if I like rename the library later, or maybe I have a generalized utility that always looks for this keyword and it's not something that's like built into the API, but it's something that my site generator cares about this keyword. Um, it seems fine that you could have multiple IDs and, and the more I think about it, the more that I'll just, I'm thinking like, I'll just check to make sure that if you append to a graph that that ID doesn't already exist. Um, what else do we want in here? We want a at to do proceeds, uh, proceeding following. Um, and what that will basically do is it'll say, okay, this block of text follows this block of text and it precedes this block of text. Um, so that'll be useful for just iterating over everything in a file. Um, I think that'll be useful. Uh, parse tags, do stuff, parse tags, uh, build relevant nodes so there's a whole bunch of stuff to stick inside here that we need to do but um, I want to run our test and see what this actually outputs uh, so what blew up here doormouse is not a function why is doormouse not a function because it's never returned also doormouse doesn't return the source and it very much needs to <laughs> Return graph. There we go. Yeah. Or return root. And then return the graph. And then module dot exports equals dormouse. Does dormouse have two O's or does it have one O? I don't remember. I'm using one O for right now. That might be spelled wrong. It has still exploded. Unexpected token. Did I just code something wrong? What, what, what are you yelling about? Parse ident. Oh, oh, we definitely don't want to be strict when we're passing stuff into Acorn. Because Acorn will fail at a syntax error. And we do not care about the syntax. We just want comments. We're going to build an AST as close as possible purely for the point that we want to parse out our comments. So where am I doing acorn.parse? I believe... And let me look this up really quickly to make sure. I believe that Acorn has a parse damn it function, uh, which literally just like just says like, okay, always give me an AST no matter what. Do like ignore whatever errors you have to do ignore. Um, and that is not a temporary thing. We we want that to be like the permanent solution. Yeah, parse damn it takes the same arguments and returns the same syntax tree as the parse function, but never raises an error and will do its best to parse syntactically invalid code in as meaningful a way as it can. It'll insert identifier nodes with X as placeholders. 
depends on acorn.js because it uses the same tokenizer. Cool. So uh, now let's run our tests and see what they do. No, it still is not letting me do this. What's its problem? What exactly is its problem here? I do, I am passing in a source, right? Yeah, yeah, that looks fine. That's exactly what I want it to handle. Oh, wait, what do you mean? It is a... Oh, yeah, we want acorn loose. There we go. All right, so this should be a function now. What are you yelling about? Oh, okay, assertion error. Okay, so things actually just blew up. Perfect. That is what I wanted them to do. This did not get attached. Did I just do something stupid? Did I just do something really stupid? Root.node.list.push block. Oh, well, yeah. Obviously, index should be blank. But I'm not getting anything passed even into... my list. All right, let's do some debugging. What are you? Oh, wait. All right, fine. I should look into that with distilled. I'm surprised that that didn't throw an exception. Um, this should have failed on this line, but it didn't throw an exception. Why didn't it throw an exception? Uh, that might actually be a bug in distilled. It should throw an exception there. Should absolutely be throwing an exception there. Um... Should it? I mean, it's catching the exception. What what happens if I just throw a random exception here? What happens if I'm just like throw exception? Oh, yeah, no, it catches exceptions. So that is not broken. All right, we do a little bit of debugging. Um, we know that the graph is getting created. We know that a node is getting cre created. We know that it's returning nodes, index, and list. We are looking at every single comment. Probably comments is not getting filtered correctly. So let's take a quick look and see what is returned from comments. That explains why that didn't throw an exception because I have no comments. So absolutely comments is not getting filtered correctly, but we don't want to check that there. Let's uh, split the difference and check it right at the beginning. 
So then we'll know exactly where the block is that we're overzealously filtering stuff. Okay. It is an acorn that we are overzealously filtering stuff. Uh, so let's jump over back into here. What am I doing here? On comment should return stuff. Comment a type equals block. Am I wrong about that? I could be wrong about that. Oh, I am wrong about that. And this is why we use constants. Um, yeah. I'll get back to it later. me when Emacs does that. Anything blew up. Things still blew up. We are still unhappy with the state of the world. So what? Type equals block. Are we getting that comment? Um, that is really, really stinking getting filtered. What the heck? What am I being stupid about? Oh, I'm an idiot. All right, all right. False alarm, I'm an idiot. Oh my goodness. That's stupid. All right, now we get actual real errors. Excellent. Um, so comment.text is not, I guess I have not been paying much attention to how Acorn parses its comments. Maybe it's not a bad idea for me to just permanently leave a log inside here so that I can tell like what what I think it's actually like dot value or something yeah it's dot value it's not dot text all right and let's leave that for a second because inevitably I'm gonna be have done something else stupid with acorn oh no actually that's good so that passes um so we are actually capable of doing stuff now. That calls for planning what to do next. Uh, let's get rid of the ID and make this permanent. Now there's going to be a whole bunch of extra stuff added here. Assert.deep equal. Why have I not just made an assert dot um, subset equals function. I don't want to deal with this. There's got to be an assertion. Is there an assertion library in, in Node that implements a dot subset where I can do a deep equal but be OK if some of the keys don't exist? I want, yeah, I want something with a, a dot subset. JS assert object is subset of other object. Is there a lodash? Is this the entire reason I stuck lodash in here? This might be the entire reason that I stuck lodash in here. 
is just because I didn't want to deal with writing this. There is apparently an is subset. Package. And I don't want to deal with this right now. <laughs> All right. Yep. So it's time for blindly installing packages from NPM. This is going to go in the dev. This is not going to go in the official package. Dev um, is subset. Let's require this. Um. Now this is, there's the downside of this is now we're using assert.ok. Like there are cleaner ways to do this, but let's do um, subset. And we want to swap them around. Oh, I already did that. We want to test. Cool. And if I add another like random thing in here and I'm like, hey. Does that work? That should cause my test to fail. No, it don't cause my test to fail. <laughs> JSON graph. I have those mixed up. Good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that causes my test to fail. Um, we don't get pretty error reporting anymore. That makes me unhappy. But this test will still work. Um, so I am going to step away for just a second, and then we are going to implement um, a couple other, like, really low-hanging fruit stuff like... Um, proceeding following that kind of thing.